talk about um, several of the six migrant squatters released without bail on gun and drug charges. A group of migrants found squatting inside an apartment in the Bronx were arrested on gun and drug charges. They would find drugs along with weapons along with a seven-year-old child inside of that same room. Six of eight were released on their recognizance or supervised release, which we don't know what supervised release even means, to be honest with you. Several of the suspects are also under invest investigation for robberies, including a robbery pattern in Bergen County. Unveiling the conundrum. In the heart of the Bronx, amidst the pulsating rhythms of urban life, a disturbing episode unfolds, underscoring the complexities of law enforcement and the challenges faced by communities grappling with illicit activities. Eight individuals, suspected migrants, found squatting within the confines of a Bronx apartment were apprehended in a dramatic raid characterized by the presence of arms, drugs, and a palpable sense of unease. However, the aftermath of their arrest unveils a perplexing reality, as six of them are subsequently released without bail, prompting apprehension and consternation among residents. Talk about um, several of the six migrant squatters released without bail on gun and drug charges. Several people living in the basement with the guns and drugs. Police say most of them were migrants. Eight were arrested last week. The DA's office was asking for bail, but six were set free. This is a relatively quiet neighborhood. Uh, these people have been the noisiest. They've been there about six months. The narrative commences with a late night commotion as law enforcement responds to a distress call reporting an armed individual at a residence on Hull Avenue in Norwood. The ensuing confrontation culminates in the apprehension of eight suspected migrants, one of whom attempted to flee with an arm in hand. Surveillance footage captures the frenetic scene, with police vehicles descending upon the premises, emblematic of the swift and decisive action taken by authorities to quell the unfolding crisis. Subsequent investigations reveal a disturbing cache of arms, ammunition, and narcotics within the confines of the residence, painting a troubling picture of illicit activities permeating the neighborhood. The suspects, ranging in age and background, now find themselves facing a litany of charges, including armed possession, drug offenses, and child endangerment, casting a shadow of apprehension over the community. As the dust settles, attention turns to the judicial process, where the fate of the accused hangs in the balance. Astonishingly, all but two of the suspects are released without bail, a decision that elicits concern and trepidation among residents. A group of migrants found squatting inside an apartment in the Bronx were arrested on gun and drug charges. Three were taken into custody by ICE agents in the Norwood section of the Bronx yesterday. Those guys have been next door for about six months. Squatters, the landlord is in the process of trying to get them out. Several of the suspects are also under invest investigation for robberies, including a robbery pattern in Bergen County. Alfred Munoz, a neighbor impacted by the incident, expresses dismay over the prospect of living in proximity to individuals associated with criminal activities, highlighting the profound impact of the ordeal on community cohesion and safety. Munoz speculates on the circumstances surrounding the alleged squatter's tenure, suggesting that they may have surreptitiously occupied the premises without the owner's knowledge. The inability to swiftly evict them, compounded by legal complexity surrounding residency rights, exacerbates the sense of vulnerability experienced by residents, who find themselves thrust into a precarious situation. The release of the suspects, particularly in light of the severity of the charges leveled against them, prompts introspection regarding the efficacy of the criminal justice system in addressing issues of public safety and community well-being. The decision to release individuals accused of engaging in criminal behavior without imposing bail conditions raises questions regarding the adequacy of measures aimed at deterring recidivism and safeguarding the interests of law-abiding citizens. Furthermore, it underscores broader concerns regarding the prevalence of squatting and its attendant ramifications for urban communities grappling with socioeconomic challenges. The insidious nature of squatting, compounded by its association with criminal activities, underscores the urgent need for comprehensive strategies aimed at addressing root causes and implementing proactive measures to mitigate its proliferation. The saga of the migrant squatters in the Bronx serves as a sobering reminder 
of the complexities inherent in combating crime and safeguarding communities. It underscores the imperative of collaborative efforts between law enforcement, policymakers, and community stakeholders to devise holistic solutions that uphold the rule of law, protect the rights of citizens, and foster a sense of security and well-being within neighborhoods. Only through concerted action and unwavering commitment can communities confront the scourge of criminality and build a brighter, safer future for all. Bronx Squatter Crew Arrest The Bronx neighborhood of Norwood was rattled last week by the arrest of eight individuals involved in a squatter crew accused of various criminal activities, including armed possession and drug dealing. The incident unfolded on Hull Avenue, just across the street from PS56, where residents reported chaos and disturbances caused by the unruly group. Following their arrest, six of the suspects were released without bail, sparking frustration and concern among local residents. Well, out of the six people freed without bail, four of them are out on supervised release. Suspects are now out of this house. Only two of them are being held in jail. The rest released without bail. A uh, sergeant and two cops pull up to this house. They see a man pointing a gun down a driveway. They were squatting there despite the landlord trying to get yes, them out. I got you. The NYPD apprehended the suspects after receiving reports of one of them brandishing a 9mm CZ pistol on the property. This led to their arrest and subsequent legal proceedings. However, despite the severity of the charges against them, six of the individuals were released from custody, prompting questions about the effectiveness of the justice system in addressing such cases. Among the released suspects was Hector de Sousa Villalta, the alleged armed man who was granted supervised release by Bronx criminal court judge Eugene D. Bowen. Despite the district attorney's recommendation for a substantial bail amount, Judge Bowen opted for supervised release for de Sousa Villalta. Similarly, two other suspects, Yoesi Pino Castillo and Jefferson Orlando Abro, were also released on their own recognizance by the same judge. Another Bronx criminal court judge, Lawrence Bushing, oversaw the cases of three additional suspects, Yoyaro Martinez, Joan Cardinia Silva, and Urban Lozado Munoz. These individuals were also granted supervised release following their hearings, despite facing similar charges as their counterparts. The decision to release the suspects without bail has raised questions about the criteria used by judges in such cases. Despite facing charges related to armed possession, drug offenses, and endangering a child, the suspects were allowed to walk free, exacerbating concerns about public safety in the neighborhood. Furthermore, the discovery of four arms on the property adds another layer of seriousness to the situation. The presence of illegal arms in the hands of individuals engaged in criminal activities heightens the risk to community safety and underscores the importance of swift and effective legal intervention. The response from local residents reflects a mix of frustration, fear, and disappointment. Many expressed dismay at the leniency shown towards the suspects, fearing that their release could lead to further disturbances and criminal behavior in the neighborhood. The presence of gangsters and wannabe gangsters has left residents on edge, highlighting the need for robust measures to address criminal activity and ensure the safety and security of the community. The eight people who are arrested are facing several gun and drug charges. Guns and drugs were found in the same room as a seven-year-old child. The problem is that there were squatters. Police say the people were squatting in that home. In light of these developments, there is a pressing need for a thorough review of the judicial process and the factors influencing decisions regarding bail and pretrial release. Balancing the rights of the accused with the need to protect public safety requires careful consideration and a commitment to upholding the rule of law. Moving forward, it is essential for law enforcement agencies, prosecutors, and the judiciary to work collaboratively to address the underlying issues contributing to criminal behavior and to implement measures aimed at preventing recidivism. By prioritizing community safety and holding individuals accountable for their actions, authorities can help restore trust and confidence in the justice system while safeguarding the well-being of residents. Addressing Crime and Squatter Troubles In the bustling borough of the Bronx, nestled amidst the vibrant streets and bustling neighborhoods, lies a community grappling with a distressing reality. 
What was once a haven of tranquility has now become a battleground, plagued by the presence of alleged squatters engaging in criminal activities. The unfolding saga sheds light on the challenges faced by residents as they navigate through a landscape marred by fear, frustration, and a sense of vulnerability. The narrative unfurls with a startling revelation by law enforcement officials. Hector de Souza Villalta and Javier Alborno, both Venezuelan nationals, found themselves in the clutches of the law, allegedly caught in possession of hand arms. However, the plot thickened as officers unearthed a cache of arms, including a Springfield 9mm pistol and a clandestine ghost arm. The discovery didn't end there. Police also seized three extended mags, ammunition, and bags containing drugs like ketamine and cocaine. Amidst this grim tableau, a seven-year-old child was discovered within the premises, casting a pall of concern over the child's safety and well-being. Found guns and drugs. Also inside that house, a young child. A long group of migrants allegedly selling drugs after taking over this multi-family house. Cops arrested him along with seven others, another man, 22-year-old Javier Alborno. This is happening in our city right now. These guys are somewhere in federal uh, custody. Despite concerted efforts by residents to bring attention to the escalating situation, authorities remained inert until the recent arm-related incident. Numerous complaints lodged regarding sidewalk blockages and disturbances caused by the squatters fell on deaf ears, perpetuating a cycle of impunity and exacerbating tensions within the community. John Pitt, a retired doorman and caretaker of a neighboring property, bemoaned the daily sight of litter-strewn sidewalks and the brazen drug-related activities unfolding in close proximity to a local school. Saida Ali, co-owner of the property occupied by the squatters, voiced her apprehension and trepidation over the escalating crime plaguing the area. With her husband frequently commuting to and from work, she harbored deep-seated concerns regarding his safety amidst the burgeoning criminal activities unfolding near their property. The pervasive sense of vulnerability underscored the urgent need for effective intervention measures to mitigate the root causes of crime and restore a semblance of peace to the beleaguered neighborhood. The plight of the Bronx community serves as a poignant reminder of the multifaceted challenges posed by criminal elements and squatter-related issues. It underscores the imperative of proactive policing, community engagement, and collaborative efforts aimed at fostering a safer, more secure environment for all residents. By addressing the underlying socioeconomic factors contributing to crime and providing robust support mechanisms for affected communities, authorities can chart a path towards revitalizing neighborhoods and instilling a renewed sense of hope and resilience within the community fabric. Drug Charges In the bustling urban landscape of the Bronx, a recent incident has spotlighted the intersection of law enforcement, immigration, and community safety. Eight individuals, suspected migrants, were apprehended last week within a Bronx apartment on charges ranging from armed possession to drug offenses. However, the subsequent release of six of them without bail has stirred controversy and raised pertinent questions about public safety and judicial proceedings. The saga unfolded late one Wednesday evening as law enforcement responded to reports of a person wielding an arm at a residence on Hall Avenue in Norwood. The ensuing police operation, captured on surveillance footage, culminated in the arrest of eight individuals, underscoring the gravity of the situation and the swift response by authorities. Subsequent investigations uncovered a disturbing cache of arms, ammunition, and narcotics within the premises, painting a troubling picture of illicit activities permeating the neighborhood. The suspects, identified as migrants hailing from diverse backgrounds, now find themselves facing a litany of charges, including armed possession, drug offenses, and child endangerment, signaling the severity of the allegations leveled against them. However, the aftermath of their arrest has sparked controversy and consternation, as six of the suspects were released without bail, prompting concerns about the efficacy of the criminal justice system in addressing public safety concerns. 
Police make a drug and gun bust at a house where migrants were squatting. They would find drugs along with weapons along with a seven-year-old child inside of that same room. Guns, drugs in the house, ketamine, children in the house. There's four more guns in that apartment. There's drugs in that apartment. The decision to release individuals accused of serious offenses without imposing bail conditions has ignited a debate about the adequacy of measures aimed at deterring criminal behavior and safeguarding communities. The release of the suspects has underscored broader issues surrounding squatting and its implications for urban neighborhoods grappling with socioeconomic challenges. The alleged occupation of the residents by the suspects without the owner's knowledge highlights the vulnerabilities inherent in property rights and the legal complexity surrounding eviction proceedings. As the community grapples with the aftermath of the incident, attention has turned to the individuals involved and their backgrounds. Detailed profiles of the suspects reveal a complex web of immigration history, prior encounters with law enforcement, and allegations of criminal behavior, shedding light on the multifaceted nature of the case and its broader implications for immigration policy and enforcement. Furthermore, the involvement of ICE in apprehending several of the suspects has added another layer of complexity to the situation, raising questions about the intersection of immigration enforcement and criminal justice. The issuance of detainer requests for certain individuals underscores the challenges inherent in addressing issues of immigration status and criminal behavior within the confines of the legal system. The incident involving the Bronx migrant squatters serves as a sobering reminder of the complexities inherent in addressing crime immigration, and community safety. It underscores the need for a comprehensive approach that balances the imperatives of law enforcement, immigration enforcement, and community engagement. Only through collaborative efforts and proactive measures can communities effectively address the myriad challenges posed by illicit activities and safeguard the well-being of residents. Unveiling the Bronx Squatter Saga In the heart of the Bronx, a scene unfolded that captured the attention of law enforcement and the community. A group of armed-toting migrant squatters ensconced in a basement apartment faced the weight of the law as authorities uncovered a trove of illicit substances in proximity to a young child. The events that transpired shed light on the complexities of urban living, immigration enforcement, and public safety, prompting scrutiny and introspection. It was a Wednesday evening when the NYPD responded to a distressing call, a report of a man brandishing an arm at the Hall Avenue residence in Norwood. Swiftly, officers descended upon the scene, encountering a tense standoff as a suspect attempted to flee into the basement, pistol in hand. The ensuing confrontation led to the arrest of seven individuals, their identities and backgrounds shrouded in intrigue and suspicion. Authorities say they were part of a heavily armed group of migrants allegedly selling drugs. There were a lot of people, a lot of young people, a lot of motorcycles. One for attempted murder in Yonkers and one walking around with an open gun indictment walking around. Uh, that man was out on an attempted murder from Yonkers months prior. Amidst the chaos, the plight of the building owner emerged. A hapless bystander caught in the crossfire of criminal activity and bureaucratic red tape. His revelation that he was unaware of the individuals occupying his property underscored the vulnerabilities inherent in property rights and the challenges of combating squatter encroachments in urban landscapes. As the investigation unfolds, attention has turned to the broader implications of the Bronx squatter saga, an indictment of systemic failures and a call to action for enhanced vigilance and proactive measures to safeguard communities. In the crucible of urban living, the line between safety and peril grows ever thinner, reminding us of the imperative to confront the scourge of criminality with unwavering resolve and collective action. Plight of Homeowners In the tranquil suburbs of San Antonio, Texas, a nightmare unfolded for Judith Matthews and Abram Mendez, a tale of betrayal, legal loopholes, and the harrowing reality of squatting. Their fixer-upper property, once a beacon of hope for renovation and restoration, became the battleground for a protracted struggle against a contractor-turned-squatter whose refusal to vacate the premises 
plunge the homeowners into a legal quagmire. The saga began innocuously enough, an agreement forged between homeowners and contractor, aimed at renovating their abode. However, what started as a routine transaction soon spiraled into chaos as the contractor, emboldened by the homeowner's trust, overstayed his welcome and morphed into an uninvited occupant. Despite efforts to terminate the arrangement, the squatter dug his heels in, asserting his right to remain, a stark reminder of the vulnerabilities faced by property owners in the face of squatting. Shocking incidents of physical altercations and property damage serve as a sobering reminder of the toll exacted by squatting, both financially and emotionally, on unsuspecting homeowners. Furthermore, the couple's assertion that the squatter inflicted damage to the property, coupled with the exorbitant costs incurred in initiating the eviction process, highlights the disproportionate burden borne by victims of squatting. Mendez's lamentations about the systemic failures that perpetuate the issue, citing a perceived motive for municipalities to profit from homeowners' misfortune, cast a damning indictment on the broader socio-legal landscape. In the absence of meaningful intervention from law enforcement, the couple finds themselves ensnared in a seemingly intractable predicament, grappling with the repercussions of a broken system that affords greater protections to squatters than to law-abiding property owners. Their pleas for legislative action resonate as a clarion call for reform, signaling the urgent need to address the systemic inadequacies that enable squatting to flourish with impunity. Ultimately, the plight of Judith Matthews and Abram Mendez serves as a cautionary tale, a stark reminder of the vulnerabilities inherent in property ownership and the urgent imperative to enact meaningful safeguards against the scourge of squatting. As their battle rages on, the couple's resilience and determination stand as a testament to the indomitable spirit of homeowners grappling with adversity in the pursuit of justice and restitution. Confronting Recurring Challenges the recent arrest of several alleged migrant squatters in a Bronx basement has brought to light concerning issues surrounding illegal arms, drug possession, and the challenges faced by law enforcement in dealing with repeat offenders. On March 27, the NYPD responded to a report of a man with an arm near Hull Avenue. This led to the apprehension of 24-year-old Hector de Souza Villalta, believed to be from Venezuela, who fled into a residence at 3259 Hull Avenue. Villata and seven other individuals, along with a seven-year-old child whose parents were not immediately identified, were found living in the basement of the property. Upon investigation, the police discovered a cache of illegal arms and drugs within the premises. In addition to Villata, 22-year-old Javier Alborno attempted to flee with an arm, but was swiftly apprehended. While the suspects claimed residency in the apartment, NYPD Chief of Patrol John Chell expressed skepticism, suggesting they were squatting. The landlord, unaware of the occupants, was in civil court seeking their eviction. Following the acquisition of a search warrant, law enforcement uncovered two more arms, ammunition, and various drugs, including a mixture of ketamine and cocaine. Chell highlighted the precariousness of the situation, noting that many of the individuals had prior criminal records and had swiftly returned to the streets after incarceration. Uh, these are migrants. Uh, they're, they're squatting. Six of eight were released on their own recognizance or supervised release, which we don't know what supervised release even means, to be honest with you. They end up chasing someone with a gun into an apartment yeah. with seven other people. And a child. They, and a child. Oh. They chase that man into a, into a basement apartment and they make, make the arrest. Furthermore, enhancing collaboration between law enforcement agencies at the local, state, and federal levels is crucial for effective crime prevention and enforcement efforts. By sharing information, resources, and expertise, authorities can better identify and apprehend individuals involved in illegal activities and disrupt criminal networks. Addressing the root causes of migration and providing support for vulnerable populations can help prevent individuals from resorting to criminal behavior as a means of survival. This requires a coordinated approach involving government agencies, nonprofit organizations, and international partners to address issues such as poverty, violence, and lack of opportunities in migrants' countries of origin. 
Overall, the recent arrest of alleged migrant squatters in the Bronx underscores the complex challenges faced by law enforcement in combating illegal arms and drug-related crimes. Addressing these issues requires a multifaceted approach that encompasses crime prevention, social intervention, and collaboration between various stakeholders. By addressing the root causes of criminal behavior and implementing effective strategies for enforcement and rehabilitation, we can work towards creating safer communities for all. That's all for this video, folks. See you next time.